In this video, we present the solution to question number seven for practice exam number one for math 1210, in which case we're given the graph of a piecewise function, and we're asked to find uh, the formula for said piecewise function. And so this question is intended to be a question for which we're gonna eliminate all but the correct answer. So looking at this graph right here, it's important to identify what are the pieces. It would look like I have three distinct pieces. There's like three different lines that seem to be glued together. And so as such, I'll be looking for a formula that has three different pieces. When you look at option A, you have negative x and x minus four. Those are two lines, I need three lines, so that's not gonna work. When you look at option C, you have a square root function and a line. That's two pieces, and also I don't need a square root. That's not going to work. Um, option E, you have the constant function 1, the constant function negative 1. That, those are linear functions, but there's only two pieces. That's not going to work. When you look at option B, all right, you'll see that there is a line. There is a line. There is a line. There's three pieces, so that seems, that seems plausible. Um, option D also has three pieces, so those are my contenders right now. When you look at option D though, you have a x plus one, which is a line. You have x minus five, which is a line. But the third piece, x squared minus three x plus four, that's gonna be the graph of a parabola. We don't have any curvature on our graph right here. So it can't be option D. So we're down to option B, but there's also the very dangerous answer, F, none of the above, bum, bum, bum. So even though we've eliminated everything else, because there will be an option of none of the above, which is a legitimate answer right here, uh, we can't just accept B because we've eliminated everything else. So now that we have B in our focus, let's check. Okay, so we have three linear pieces. That's good. Look at their domains. So this one will go from negative three to negative one, for which negative three is right here, negative one's right here. Oh, okay, the first line actually does go from negative three to, to negative one. Then the next domain will be negative one to one, which one would be right here. Okay, the second line does go from negative one to one. That's so far so good. And then the last domain, one to two, we're gonna go from one to two. So, okay, the domain matches up on this one. That, that's really promising. Notice if you went back to example D right here, this one went from one to three, uh, sorry, it's from negative infinity to one, one to three, and then three to infinity, right? So the domain wouldn't have agreed on this one even if we didn't rule it out for the parabola right there. The domain is a very important part of this. All right, so we have the correct domain, we have three linear functions. Now let's verify those linear functions. Let's start with the middle piece, because uh, after all, I'm trying to see if I can eliminate it all. If you take the line y equals x, that'll be the diagonal line. It goes through points like 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, negative 1, negative 1. That's exactly this line right here. So the second piece actually is totally kosher for this graph. Uh, the next one, 2x minus 1. If we think of it as a line in slope-intercept form, its y-intercept should be negative 1, its slope is 2 for which you look at this function right here, you can see that the slope is two, rise two over one. Um, what would the y-intercept of this thing be? If we continue in this regard, you go over one, down two. The y-intercept would be negative one. Yeah, that's that's the right line there. So this is very, very promising. Um, the last one, if we just wanna be extra cautious right here, three halves x plus one half, okay? So that tells me my slope is three over two. So you go up three over two, that is the correct slope. If we were to continue with this slope, we go up three over two, connect the dot right there. Yeah, sure enough, that would be a y-intercept of one half. Um, I would, I'm totally on board that these are the three correct lines with the three correct domains. This is the correct uh, formula for this piecewise function.